there are days when I'll be checking out some awesome Android app when I run into an anti-pattern that's pure anti-Android and which totally destroys the magic and I'm all like... Well, my team is sick of me making a mess of their workspace, so I'm channeling my energy into something more productive. Welcome to Table Flip. Today I'm returning to the topic of one of my earliest Android UX rants, Exit Menu Items. Back in the days before time began, when humans typed into terminal prompts and were huddled in dark caves googling Wikipedia for fire, single tasking operating systems like MS-DOS allowed us to run one app at a time. Exit was unambiguous, a necessity for leaving one app and starting another. The instruction itself had semantic meaning. Exit mapped to the C function exit, which terminated the calling process. As we crawled from our hidden caves hunting the last of the woolly mammoth, multitasking operating systems like Windows enabled us to run multiple programs at once, each represented by its own window. As before, our exit menu item is used to call exit to terminate the process and allow us to reclaim the resources used by the task window. Having grown fat and complacent with multitasking operating systems gorging on a glut of RAM and CPU resources provided by Moore's Law, smartphones introduced a new challenge. How do we create responsive multitasking operating systems with a fraction of the resources? Well, unlike windowed operating systems, smartphones generally present apps full screen and one at a time, so it's easy to establish a relative priority between applications. Following Android's three laws of robotics, one, Whichever app is in the foreground must have the resources it needs to run, and run responsively. 2. Any application with a visible activity, or a running service, should be allowed to run, except when doing so would be in violation of the first law. And 3. Any application without a visible activity, or a running service, should be kept in memory to reduce startup latency, except when doing so would be in violation of the first or second laws. Much as Asimov's three laws were built into positronic brains, so too have Android's laws been baked into the platform. This has three implications for app design. Firstly, knowing that the OS can terminate your app's process without warning at any time, you can't rely on having an on-exit handler that will be called whenever your app is closed. Instead, your activities should listen for on-pause handlers that indicate that your app is no longer active. At this point, it may be terminated at any time, so it should save any user data to prevent potential data loss. When your activity is no longer visible, it will receive an on-stop handler. A good app will treat this handler as the equivalent of an on-exit handler, reducing its resource usage as much as possible. We already know that the background apps are low priority, so they should consume the absolute minimum in terms of resources, even without the system having to terminate them. Doing so will increase the chances of your app remaining running, thereby decreasing startup time and improving its responsiveness. So thanks to the three laws, your app doesn't need an exit button, but what's the harm in having one anyway? Why do these seemingly insignificant UI elements fill me with a dark and fiery rage that burns as intensely as the heart of a neutron star? Where does that anger go? Well, I bottle up my emotions into a dark fist of psychic hate that I can harness and unleash on unwary foes and an exit menu item in Android has no semantic wide system meaning. So including one in your app actually introduces ambiguity. Consider the Google apps that typically ship with most Android devices. Imagine if Gmail, the Gallery, and the Contacts app all had exit buttons. What would you expect them to do? Chances are you've never looked for an exit button in any of these apps and have never been disappointed that it's not there. If you build an application that properly handles its state transitions, it's predictable, it's configurable, and, and it's unambiguous, your users won't ask for an exit button. But what about apps like music, navigation, or even banking apps, whose background behaviors can demand stronger user messages? From them, we need an explicit exit button, but fortunately, that's exactly what the back button does on Android. When a user presses back, the activity calls finish, explicitly destroying the activity and freeing its resources, making it a functional equivalent to the exit button in days of yore. For most apps, it makes little difference if the user is exiting explicitly or switching to another app, but in some cases this additional signal can be useful. Apps like movies or music players don't need this signal as they already show their users semantic controls to determine ongoing behavior. A music player, for example, should keep rocking out until you pause playback. Turn by turn navigation, though, has no simple cues. In this rare example, it can be useful to interpret a back button press as an explicit request to end all root guidance. Some apps, such as instant messaging, banking, or remote terminal sessions, may need a way to terminate the current session, whether it be for security or resource usage reasons. 
Rather than using the semantic semantically ambiguous exit menu item, it's better practice to include a menu item that describes exactly what will happen, such as log out, sign out, or a similarly descriptive action. For users who want to take the proverbial shotgun to the head of zombie background apps, they can force stop a process from the app setting, as well as swiping to remove apps from the application switcher on newer Android platform releases. I'm nearly done, but I can already hear the fevered tapping of fingers on keyboards as some of you prepare your own retaliatory rants railing against my arrogance at the presumption of knowing what users want better than themselves. I know from having been told that yes, many app developers will still receive requests to add an exit button to their apps, generally so that users can unambiguously prevent the app from consuming any resources. I understand the perspective, but expecting the developer of an app which doesn't properly manage its resources to manage them correctly simply by adding an exit button introduces a certain level of cognitive dissonance. If a developer can't manage their resources effectively without an exit button, what reason do you have to believe that they will handle their resources more effectively just because they include one? If your users are still asking for an exit button, it's generally because they believe your app is consuming resources when it shouldn't be. Adding an exit button may give them a temporary feeling of hope, but it will be quickly extinguished by a swamp of tears and recrimination when the ambiguity of their new exit option becomes apparent. What should happen to services when a user hits exit? What about intent receivers? Widgets? Should you stop listening for GCM messages? Different users will have different expectations and satisfying some will frustrate others. The best solution is to obviate their perceived need for an exit button by following these simple steps. Start by freeing resources, stopping services, disabling sensor listeners, and turning off location requests, and otherwise disabling anything that consumes resources, all within the on-pause handler of your activities. Take this a step further by avoiding singletons and custom application objects within your application whenever possible. If your resources are tied to an activity, they'll be freed when the user hits the back button, rather than having to wait until the application process itself is terminated. Another culprit for resource consumption is an app that sets alarms to wake the device and pull for updates on a regular basis. You can improve your app's battery drain profile by making these alarms inexact and allowing the user to specify the frequency of these background updates. But every time you ping a server when there was nothing to update, you're not only draining the battery from the device being on, you're also draining the battery by turning on the cell radio for no good reason. Google Cloud Messaging allows you to eliminate all polling so you only ping your server when you know that you have information worth downloading. If your, app doesn't require, if your app does require a way of signing out or logging off, create an explicit, semantically meaningful way of doing so, rather than relying on an ambiguous legacy exit command. Music apps are the most common example of an app that should continue running at a high priority, even when there is no activity visible. However, when no music is playing, the app is no different to any other background app. When it is playing, make sure it's easy to stop. Rich notifications and widgets should provide easy shortcuts to stop playback at which point you should free your resources in exactly the same way as a typical app within their on-pause or on-stop handlers. Finally, the Android OS provides a number of cues of significant system events including low battery and low memory. Listen for these intents and modify your resource usage of your app accordingly. Users only ask you to include an exit button if they blame your app for consuming memory, draining the battery or otherwise deteriorating their overall experience. Rather than implementing a menu item that won't solve their underlying problem, spend your time making your app more efficient and more responsive. My name is Redo Meyer. This was Table Flip.